So you see the importance of my little black box is it's actually got the tools of my trade in. And if the worst comes to the worst, if the BBC goes bust, I can still get a job as a cook any day. And in fact, actually a cook is what I am. And although I've been enjoying myself with the oysters outside, um, Len did give me some mussels. And I thought it'd be quite good if I cooked you a few of Len's mussels, which have come from the river, which is right outside this kitchen where I'm sitting now, Erica's kitchen. It's really great. I'm standing, not sitting. But one of the very important things about mussels, and this is a mussel here, it's got this beard. This is the bit it attaches itself to the rocks with or wherever it lives. It's held on by this beard. Obviously, it's inedible. Vital thing, rip that right off. And it, by the way, it's quite a hard task, but you've got to rip that thing off. Another thing that um, mussels often do to you and confound all of your best laid plans is often they're full of mud. And if you've cooked them, as you'll see in a moment, and one of them's full of mud, then you've blown it. So an essential test with every mussel, put it sideways like that. And if it was full of mud, it would have separated to reveal two halves of mud. That one's good. So just to repeat that, do clean off everything. If it's got barnacles, scrape it, use a knife, scrape it away, get them as clean as you can. Right, that's enough lessons. What we want to do now is get on with the actual cooking process of these things, because they're beautiful. And actually, Erica, whose kitchen this is, cleaned a pile of them for me earlier on, speeds things up, makes life a lot better. Because mussels are fun, because you can uh, cook them in white wine, which is one of the prime ingredients of this particular little dish, I'll just open that, just some dry white wine. If you can't afford dry white wine, use some dry cider. Doesn't matter too much. If you're going to stop m eating mussels because you've got no wine or cider, then use a little drop of water. But if you can, use some wine. Other ingredients are one onion for the amount of mussels we're doing, a load of garlic here, make sure they can see this garlic, and then quite a bit of parsley. We'll say about that much parsley. And we want a bit of butter. And you can't economize on these things. You know, chuck in a quarter of a pound of butter into a pan like that. While that butter's melting, I'm going to crush these cloves of garlic. There's no need to peel them, by the way, because you won't actually be eating the garlic. You'll just be using the flavor of it. So you're wasting your time. You could be better off having a glass of wine instead of painfully getting garlic skin under your nails. Actually, on the subject of wine, it's a myth that you have to drink white wine with fish. You can drink anything you like. Red wine's perfectly all right. And um, I'm going to have a drop of that just for the moment. Under this intense pressure we've been working this morning to eat oysters and cockles and things. Right, a little slurp goes down very well. We've got to chop the onion. This is a thing that always, you know, you can show off doing this. It's quite good. You chop it finely like that and then back like that. And you never cut your fingers, which is quite important, because the mess, the resulting mess, is an inconvenience. Chop, chop, chop. Fast as you like, or as slow as you like, but actually, although I'm sort of showing off in half a way, I'd rather you didn't show off at home and cut your fingers. I'd rather you enjoyed the muscles, you know, take your time over it. Actually, I think with things like this, you know, it's a cheap meal to prepare, it's a feast as well, so now we want to get all of these elegantly prepared ingredients popped in to the melted butter. Chuck them in. Just to remind you again, I'm sure you haven't paid proper attention. It is parsley, garlic, onions and butter. Right. Maximum heat. I don't cook on electricity all that often, as a matter of fact. So it's like on the last thing we did on damn boat, he made me uh, kind of camping gas thing, now electricity. Anyway, so in they all go. All the lovely mussels. Might add a drop of white wine. Talking of which, I actually haven't had a drink for a while. Don't think it'd do me any harm to have a quick slurp. Because it's hot in the kitchen. One needs a drink from time to time. Now I'm going to put the lid on, let them stew away for a while. You can, you know, just stop because they've got to cook for a few moments. Come back when I'm ready, OK? OK, you can come back now. All right, bring your camera in. I'm going to take the lid off. And if it's all gone well, you're going to see these little dreams opening up. Now, you see, look at those bubbling away. Thing, always test the stuff. God, already tasting terribly good. I'll give those a little stir around with the thing here. You see how they're beginning to, beginning to open? Incidentally, any that don't open through this, after this cooking process is complete, don't eat them. The ones that don't open are going to be dead. But come right in there, Malcolm, would you please? Look, you've got wonderful colours in there. You've got steam bubbling up. You've got the whole heart of food happening here. Come closer, closer, closer. Now, 
Ladies and gentlemen, and one to other people that we've met on this trip who've all thought we're a bit strange, there you have a magnificent dish of moule marinière. Gosh. Okay, so there we are. The cooking is done. We've got Erica's uh, mixing bowl. I'd actually wanted some rather fine uh, sort of porcelain, but beggars which we are, I can assure you, we can't be choosers. Anyway, these mussels are cooked. Tip them into the bowl. I'm not going to put all the juice in, that's why I'm using this uh, spoon with holes in, you see, because we don't want to burn our little artist's fingers when we eat them with our fingers. We're going to drink the sauce a little bit separately later on. That was one for the queen. God, I'm actually quite hungry, despite all the oysters we had earlier on. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold it, hold it, hold it. They are hot. Hot. But good. Very, very good. I tell you what, if you just hold there a minute, you just keep gazing at these, would you? Can you come in closer? I want to get Erica a moment. Hold on there, you just keep looking at them. They're very beautiful. Erica, could you spare a moment, please? Erica? Yeah? Could you, I'm sorry to interrupt you, you couldn't come through to your, your kitchen, could you? Because what I'd like you to do, we've left you a dreadful mess here. Come round, look at Erica, because this is her kitchen. We've ruined it all morning, we've trampled over the lawn, we've abused her oyster farm, we've drunk her wine, we've used her electricity and gas, and all I've got to offer you is either, and the choice is yours, one of my muscles or a big kiss. Oh. Which will you have? A big kiss. Mm. Thanks ever so much. <laughs> we've really enjoyed being here, and that's everybody. It's been great. Thanks a million. You're welcome. Very welcome. We'll try a, a muscle at the same time. I wish you wouldn't interrupt. It's my <laughs> programme, for God's sake. Have a muscle anyway. Have a little... They're quite hot. And then let me give you a little bit of juice, if I can find it. I know they're in here, because I've been yes. looking around the kitchen all morning. And uh, eat that one. Put a, up. Put a little bit of juice in there as well. And see how you like it. If you don't like it, tell them. Because I'll always lie about it later. In fact, if you do tell them you don't like it, we'll cut it out of the film, yeah, so they'll never awesome. see it. Lovely. Mm, beautiful. Thanks a lot. Mm.